you want to give it? Oh, we'll give time for cameras to. Yeah, sorry, I'm my maintenance. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Got it. You ready good? Let's we'll start over here with Matt. Coach, adding Celeste this all season, um, how did that whole recruitment get her coming to Ohio State go down, and what has she proven so far? Well, it's the third time I've tried to get her, so fortunately that uh, finally worked out for us. But, um, no, she's a great kid, and um, she did visit here out of high school, and so she had been familiar with us and um, just kind of looking for something different in her last year, and, and I think it's going to be a great fit. She's already provided great leadership, great energy in practice. Um, you know, she was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, so I think with how we play, especially in our press, she's going to be really effective. And, and I think just a different offensive system will give her a chance to kind of showcase her skills a little bit more than she has been able to in the past. And second, how is Madison recovering from the injury? Yeah, everything's on track right now. She's doing a great job. She's very diligent. We've got a great sports performance team that's you know kind of guiding her in that process. But she's working really hard, and you know we feel really really good where she is right now. Front row, right. Kevin, obviously, when you're coming off the of yield again last year, that makes the preseason expectations a lot higher. Is there anything you have to do to kind of manage that with your team? You know, I just think, <clears throat> really just emphasize that it's a new year, a new season, um, a new team. You know, we, we added Celeste and, and a couple other people who I think are going to really be big additions. We also lost Taylor Mikesell, who was a great player. And, and so we'll look a little different, um, I think. But um, just, just I think emphasizing um, the things that allowed us to be successful last year and the work ethic and chemistry and, and all those things and just make sure we can kind of recreate that part of it and, and, and then just you know shoot for even higher expectations. You mentioned losing Taylor, obviously, you know, the biggest part of your team is not here anymore. What do you have to do to adjust to not having her anymore? Yeah, I mean, she's a, a special player and, and a unique one in that she, she shot the ball so well. And so I think we're going to need some other people to, to step up make some shots from the perimeter. Um, I think, not kind of what JC stays healthy, that'll, that'll take care of part of that. And, um, but I also think we can be better in some ways. You know, when we add somebody as good as Celeste Taylor on defense and, and the other people that we added will provide us probably more depth than we've ever had. And so I think we'll be a little different, um, but we can be as good and, and hopefully maybe even better. Back right. Uh, Cody, a big summer. How did you, I mean, for you, yeah, no, she had a great summer with USA Basketball. Um, you know, they won the gold medal at the you know, under-19 World Championships in Madrid, Spain, and she had a key role on that team. And, you know, I think the, the thing that's great about USA Basketball is you play with such other terrific players. You know, you really they emphasize sharing the ball, and, and it's about the team. And, you know, she was about that last year, but I think just another summer of um, really learning those type of things will, will really help her and, and help her contribute um, to this team. You mentioned depth, you mentioned defense. You guys got so far last year. That next step is always really, really hard. What's it going to take for this group to get that next step? I, I think <clears throat> if you look at where we were last year, we were, we were really good in transition offense. We were good on offense in general. Our press was really good. I think the next step would probably be to be better in the half court defensively. And um, and so that's where we're going to put a bat and rebound in. I think we're going to put a lot of emphasis in those areas. Over here on the left. Coach, throughout the offseason, what areas of the game have you seen this team get stronger in compared to last year? Yeah, um, I think already we're a little bit better in the half court defensively. And like I said, just, just with the makeup of our team, um, Celeste, I've mentioned her a couple times, great addition defensively. Um, Tyre Parks gives us a bigger, stronger physical post player around the basket because we had some issues guarding good post players. And so I can already see with just the makeup of the team, I think we have a chance to be much better in the defensive end. With some new additions, how has this team gelled off the floor? Yeah, that was a, a huge part of our success last year. It's one of the closest teams that we've ever had. Our chemistry was excellent, and we kind of fed off of that. And so um, with, you know, J.C. Sheldon's leadership and Ricky Harris and people like that, they've continued to kind of lead the way. And, and so I think that will be another another season where that's a huge strength of ours. In the middle, in the white. Uh, you mentioned J.C. being back and helping in terms of outside shooting, but also the leadership. Just how important was it to have her back? 
for one more year and what does she provide to this team? Huge. I mean, she's such a great player and a great kid and just everything she does and the way she represents our program on and off the court is, is amazing. Um, but she's kind of the, the engine that makes our team go in terms of creating pace on offense. She's also incredible with our press and just so quick with her feet in her hands. And so she's a huge part of what we do and, and she's had an excellent off season again because she works so hard. And so I expect her to have just an outstanding season. Over here on the left. Ke Kevin, it seems like depth in the conference has just been crazy the last couple of years. How do you, how do you describe to someone that maybe isn't paying as much attention, what it, night in and night out, it's like the Big Ten and how that got you ready for postseason play. Yeah, no, the big this is as good as the Big Ten's ever been, and um, not only just with the product on the court, but the, the fans are coming out and the environments everywhere are, are um, really difficult to play in. I mean, I was selling out, Indiana's at capacity at night, but certain nights um, we we drew really well last year, and <clears throat> we've had in in our conference a lot of. Um, people use their COVID year, including us. I mean, we've benefited from it, certainly with JC coming back, Rebecca coming back. Um, but across the board, like a lot of schools have had, they have, we have a lot of like older, mature people who've played in a lot of games in, in, the, in the conference. And so it's going to be another really, really tough season um, in terms of the competition in the Big Ten. Left center. Kevin, you, you've talked about Taylor a couple of times and, and her defensive capabilities and yeah. Is it different bringing in someone who is renowned for their defense and figuring out how their skills fit into maybe your concepts as opposed to like, hey, that person can score, let's go add a score? Yeah, no, it is. And um, I think we kind of provided a unique landing space um, because she, she's she been great in the half court defensively, um, but now she can also play with full court pressure. And so I think her defense will even be more impactful than it's ever been um, like when she was at Duke. So is that something you do have to project if she's if she's maybe played more in the half court? Like, how do you how do you uh, I guess scout that and project it? That kind of yeah, thing? I mean, I, I, you can kind of project it like from an athletic standpoint. Okay. You can kind of see how that's going to fit in the full court, and that's one of the things we were looking at. And, and it's 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 been that since she's been here, she's shown that she's going to be really effective in the full court as well. And you mentioned like the COVID year and how you've been able to take advantage of that other programs have as well. Um, what has what has that been like just kind of navigating that when it comes to roster building? I know there's so many different ways that you know your roster is changing these days, but you know the ability to have a fifth, sometimes sixth year player as opposed to maybe bringing in a freshman, how has that impacted your roster building? Yeah, no, it's a great question because it's really difficult because you know you have these conversations and like for example, Jason's a great example. I had a conversation with her at the end of the year before, like, hey, what what, what are you thinking? What's your plan? And it's it's like, well, you know, I, I think I probably want to come back, but you know, if she has a great year and has a chance to go pro, then you know, how can you blame her? You know, and so, but we had, I had planned on JC, um, Rebecca in particular. R Ricky had an extra year because she had to, she was injured. Um, same with Madison, um, but we'd look a whole lot different if JC and Rebecca don't come back. And, it, and we didn't plan on that and replace them. It's hard to replace them late. I mean, you can get a transfer, but you're not going to get the same same type of kids necessarily. And we, we did sign people early to make sure we had the scholarships for them. So, But it's tricky. You know, you got to give it your best guess. you got to have the conversations and then take the information and make the, make the best decision possible. Sticking with the left of the view. Coach, if I'm not mistaken, Tiger Parks is had a double double on you guys within a year or two ago. Yeah. I remember that game specifically and she dominated. What did that game teach you about her and now that you have her on your team? Yeah, no, that's it was she's a really good addition as well because like I said earlier, like just kind of the way we're built, we get these post players that play really well on the perimeter and they're just not as um, used to being, you know, physical and, and aggressive and impactful around the basket. And so now we bring Tyre in. I think our, our our post defense and our rebounding is going to instantly improve with her. And I'm hoping like between her and Rebecca and, and even Ebony, it's kind of a three-headed monster there that can really cause problems for the other team. Does Tyre's uh, arrival change Emma Shoemate's role at all in the lineup? No. Um, we, we I'm hopeful that Emma can can really be impactful for us this year. Um, she really shoots the ball well, and I think could you know. It's, it's hard to compare anybody to, to Taylor and myself, but uh, at least could soften the blow of losing Taylor a little bit if she can have the year she's capable of having. All the way left. 
Yeah, Kevin, uh, how has NIL affected you guys, and didn't JC have some opportunities that might have kept her here? Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's been hugely impactful, and um, I, I don't think people realize how how much it's impacting women's basketball, um, and, and that's part of the reason you're seeing a lot of these fifth-year kids come back. Just the economics of it, um, if, if you're leaving men's college basketball and going to the NBA, sure. you're, you're going to have a big raise <clears throat> regardless of probably what your NIL opportunities were, and women's basketball might not be the case. Um, and so it's impacted that way. Um, it's impacting recruiting. It's impacting our players, and yes, we've got some kids that have had some good opportunities, including JC. Where's the final four this year? Cleveland. Just checking. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right back. Uh, it seemed like Ricky Harris took a huge step in her development last year. Um, so, what, I guess, what have you seen from her this offseason to kind of take that next step? Yeah, she <clears throat> she really had a great year because you know we started out so playing so well, and then all of a sudden JC gets hurt, Madison gets hurt, and we put Ricky um, as a point guard, which is really not her natural position, but. She's a very, very, very bright kid with a high basketball IQ, and so she can play multiple positions. And that's the thing I love about her, just regardless of where we put her and what we ask of her, she always steps up and, and, and does something positive for us. And so she had a really good year last year. She's been really good with her leadership in the offseason, and, and I think that's going to be – we're going to need that out of her. It's going to be important for us this year. Any last questions? <laughs>